<laughs> Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. Bit of a gray day here in Tokyo. Can't be helped. <laughs> it's warm, at least. I know the clear days are usually cold, and the gray days are usually warmer. That's how this works. And uh, finally, finally, we have some cherries open. I walked along the river yesterday afternoon for a few minutes there, and uh, they're about half open. Not yesterday afternoon, late yesterday afternoon in the evening. They're about half open here along the Sumida River. And we had reports from people in the shop that the cherries in Ueno Park are pretty much totally open. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Down by the river, it's a bit cooler, the show. The, uh, the cherry trees there. The cherry trees there by the river, there, you know, it's the colder air blowing down the river. But up on the park, it's a higher elevation, but it's away from the river, you know, so it's a bit warmer. So the report is, as of yesterday, Wayno Park cherries are all perfectly okay. Uh, down by the river, they're going to be opening. They're open halfway now, and they're going to get better the next few days. So, so if you're in Tokyo, you're here now at the right time. Karen's found some trees. There's an amazing tree behind Daihoji. I think I've never been there. People are finding locations that I didn't know about. So, so the conference starts today. Conference starts today. We've had a number of visitors this week, more than more than before. I don't know, maybe uh, there were some on Tuesday. We opened on Tuesday, ready for the, the conference visitors. And a bunch of them were in. Half a dozen people came by. And we also will really be open next Tuesday. Normally we're closed Tuesdays, but we'll be open next Tuesday for conference visitors who have done the conference back in Tokyo and then who might want to drop by. I've got the animal of the pollen is back today for me. Can't be helped. Even on a rainy day, it's still strong. So, Okay, we have work to do today. We have real printmaking work. Today will be a solid session of work. There's a few things for show and tell, some older stuff to, to touch up on. The block that we've been working on for the past few weeks is now done. It's now done. He's all carved, he's all printed. I guess what we could do, you know, I hadn't actually planned it. I was gonna get started with the next work. But we could take a test print. Now that I think about it, that's sort of a no-brainer to do that. To do that, I'll need to grab some ink. It's underneath the table there. One sec. Like... Out. There is nobody's name up on the printing board today. This isn't because all of our printers are lazy. It is because we are still actually in what's called in Japan here, Haru Yasumi. This is not holiday thing. Next month we have the Golden Week where there's a bunch of holidays together. This is simply Haru Yasumi where the schools are off. They're closed basically for the last week in March and the first week in April. And the Ishikawa-san, our printer upstairs, she's got a riding herd on grandchildren. You know, when parents go to work and the kids are off school, the rest of the family jumps in. So she's riding herd on kids. Aimi-san, she's got two kids. She's off all this week. So we have, it's Hari Yasumi. So there's no printers up there today at all. Ha! <laughs> get some some junk paper, you know, we use paper here. When we, when we use the printer to do something, we may also, we'll use the back side of the paper. We're doing that kind of recycle thing. We're trying to do the right thing. You're not waste paper. So Dave here, I need a piece of scrap paper today to print this. And what is this scrap paper that I pull up? Something I printed the other day and I got the printing size wrong. This kind of thing is my homework at night these days. I'm in school again. 
self-inflicted school. Oh, actually, it hasn't been washed yet. Let's wash it. People ask about HN. There's lots to report. Just let me try and not do too many things at the same time here. Let's do this little test printing. I have lots and lots to report about the trip to the papermaking village. Yeah, Jacques is asking the same thing. My God, yeah, Jacques wants to go to bed. He's in Europe, that's why. So he wants me to do that soon. <laughs> All right, it's okay. <laughs> so many stories, so much going on. What can I say? Okay, Jacques, a couple of things. And I'll, I can't actually tell the complete story about what's going on right now up there because it's not all about me. We've looked at different places to make paper. We've talked to different people who are making paper. Dave has resources at Mokohankan, and he has made various offers to various people up there. This much I can say. I can't name names. I'm waiting for people to get back to me with what they think about these ideas. That's sort of really all I can tell you at the moment. I can't show you pictures of the people working and, and But that's what's going on right now. We are, I will, I'll talk more about it later in the stream, you know, as far as the background, what's happening here. But that's the story in a nub. Because our current paper maker can no longer promise to fill all of our needs, we are being forced to look elsewhere. And look elsewhere for us means two things. Seeing if we can buy paper for somebody else, or seeing if we can get a whole level deeper, a whole meta level deeper, and perhaps set up our own paper making workshop up there, either by ourselves from scratch, or hiring people who are there, or supporting somebody who wants to do that. That's what's happening without the names. And it's great fun. It's like being back at the beginning of doing business again. But all of this on top of our normal work, especially on top of the normal spring rush, my God. But that's the story. That's the story in a little nutshell. Too much water, but there's our very, very, very first impression. This is not washi paper, of course, this is just junk paper. But there's our very first impression. Does it look like me? I don't know. Who knows? Let's even get a bit of a nicer feel here. When we print this, of course, it'll be printed on gently softened paper with proper sumi. That should be a bit nicer. There we go. The first one there, it slipped, of course, you can see. I think we're okay, you know. It was a pretty rough and ready job, pretty quick. His finger, maybe this finger might be a bit too fat. Maybe I should shave a bit. That finger could get a bit of shaving. This, this line here looks too heavy. So I think I will do some adjustments. Not right now with a wet block, but uh, this also, that's too heavy, that line. The, 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 eye, the eyebrow line needs a little bit of shaving right there. So I'll need to go over it. But overall, it's okay. I mean, I'm not gonna spend days and days and hours and hours on it. This is a print that's gonna be reproduced about 30 times and then put aside. I can also maybe shave his nose. His nose looks a bit thick, I think. There we have it. How much time did I spend on it? I don't know. Pretty much uh, all of it was shown on stream, I think. Someone's saying, is there a dot on the tip of the nose? Is there a dot on the tip of the nose? Yeah, there's a dot. Is that just the dirt here? What have we got? 
Yeah, look at that. The eagle eyes. Who's this dot on the tip of the nose? Tom 1060. There is indeed a little dot. Yeah, it's in there. It's on oh, Just a minute, please. It's wood. Yeah, it's a bit of uncleared wood. No, okay, not right now. This is wet wood. It's dangerous to fool around with. Good catch, sir. Thank you very much. Pick up your egg on the way out this afternoon. <laughs> okay. All right, for now, we'll put this aside. I think what I'll do with this, because the printing of this is only going to be a one-color shot, after I've got the block uh, cleaned up, I'll get the paper ready, Maybe, let's, let's put this on the table, not Saturday coming up, but maybe one of the streams next week, Monday or Thursday, maybe I'll go upstairs before the stream, get the bench ready, and maybe what I'll do is we'll do the printing stream. I can't do a complex printing stream with multicolors and stuff like that, but this is going to be a fairly easy job. So let's think about this. I will try, if possible, to do the printing on this next week on stream. But now for the real work today, for today's real job. Those of you who know our, uh, the ebb and flow of our yearly work should know what is about to happen now. We were talking about getting back to the surfer girl blocks, of course, talking about doing this, doing that. But here we are, the first week in April. I have a job that should have been done in March. Who can put their finger on it? BZN City has got it. Of course, it's time for the Patreon chibis to get carved. Long ago, they should have been, they're being shipped from April 1st, not Patreon chibis. Patreon Jimmy's. This year's pair, a couple of things the same, a couple of things different. For the past few years, we've been doing the Patreon Chibis. We've been doing them as a pair with the same image. The top and bottom are up and down on the same image. And it was kind of cool, kind of cute. When the finished prints are there, they make one print, but it caused a lot of problems because there's a bunch of people who start partway along the year, they get the second one, but not the first one. And it ends up with us having to make more for the bottom and not for the top, that people don't have a full image. It just, it was cool, but the, the logistics problems made it uh, just more trouble than it's worth. And also, the other problem we had was, of course, we've got hundreds of these things going out. When we make top and bottom, there's blue on the top and blue on the bottom. So printer A makes a batch, that's no problem. They then get sliced and the top gets sent to somebody and the bottom gets sent six months later. And we can't match up and write the person's name on every one of these. So group A from one printer, group B from another printer, group C from another printer. We try to keep the colors exactly matched, but of course they drift a little bit. So people ended up getting the top one from one printer and the bottom one from another printer. And the colors maybe, we got them really, really, really close, but they maybe didn't perfectly match. So this year, after doing that two years in a row, this year I asked our chibi designer, John Amos, I said, look, let's just do some uh, two nice pictures the way we used to do it. He's like, I'm okay with that. Okay, I have a piece of wood. Which is the hardest face? Let's have a look. at. I think they're both fairly hard, but let's see. I think this is the one we're going to be using. Melanie Mad, that happened, we got the second one of the cat. Okay, if you got just one of them, of course, write to Ayano and see if you can arrange to, to get the other part of it. You know, we're not abandoning everybody. It's not all that hard. How's this one? Hmm. Hmm. Just trying to get a feel for the block here. No, 
no real difference. You know, nothing I can detect. No real difference. Let's just go with this. I know those of you who are, are watching Instagram, you will know that a few days ago, was it, was it the day before yesterday? Yesterday, I don't remember. I posted a photograph, uh, three photographs of when I was up there in Echizen. And I, I posted three pictures. One was of a little lake, a beautiful blue little lake that's up at the top there. And one was of a, a workshop, a, a white building, just a nondescript uh, workshop there. And the third was of a cherry tree. Well, the, I, can, I can talk a little bit about this, you know, if Jacques is still here, he's interested in this. That workshop, that a picture I posted, is of course an empty workshop. It's not empty and abandoned. The people who own it know that it is a, a hugely rich resource. They are no longer in business because they couldn't, they couldn't make the business work. The kinds of paper they were making, the market that was available cost of their employees, the boiler broke down and needed to be repaired and they couldn't fix it. So they just simply retired. The gentleman is older than me, I'm 72, he's 74. So late last year he retired. The employees dispersed, they were mostly older men too. So the workshop is sitting there and it's not the only one. There are another, a number of other workshops up there. Why did they die when the market situation is what it is? David is sitting here desperately needing paper. How could it be then that a workshop up there could simply not have business and die? Well, it's, a, it's, it's an open question, you know. Our world here, where we are, we need our paper. It's an extremely small niche in the world of paper making. I know we need paper. You know we need paper. But the whole world, the rest of Japan, doesn't know anything about this. And the business model that he had had for 100x plus years, selling certain kinds of larger paper, maybe for shojis or whatever like that, that all disappeared. And he didn't have the, the wherewithal or the idea or, or the thought to maybe look wider. Maybe there's people out there who still do need paper. Maybe we could talk to those guys. From his point of view, he never, ever, ever would have thought of such a thing. Their standard business model started to decay, and they just said, Shogunai can't be helped. The world has changed. It's moved on. It's now all about iPhones. It's not about washi. We're kind of doomed. And they closed. And we can't criticize them for this. That's the way most of the world works. Businesses and industries close all the time. He just didn't know. So it's the onus has been on me. I'm the person who's at fault here because I didn't yet get our needs, you know, established and, and, and pushed out to the world. So you can see what's going on. We've jumped in here. I inspected that workshop the other day with my jaw on the floor but how to actually make this happen. Remember, I'm not a paper maker. I don't know how to do this. I know a lot about it, but I don't know how to do it. So the key is going to be this. Identify younger people or a younger person or younger people in the field who do want to work here, who do want to have a future for it. And I want to be the bridge then that matches up one or two or three of these young craftsmen with those facilities and resources that are sitting unused. And that way, we should be able to get some paper. It's going to take a while, and it's going to take a while to overcome some barriers because they're all saying the same thing. They're all saying, nah, I'm a shogun, it's over, don't push it, don't make trouble, don't make waves. But the, the visit and the trip was very, very, very positive. The, the gentleman who owns that workshop building, 
that photograph I showed the other day on Instagram. I had called him on Sunday here in Tokyo to see if there was a chance to talk to him. And it had turned out that, yeah, he said, well, I'm here tomorrow, come on, you know, come over. He didn't know I was calling from Tokyo. He's in Echizen, this is the other side of the country. So I said, oh, I'm standing here in the shop here Sunday afternoon. And, oh my God, he's available to talk to me. He didn't say no. <laughs> he didn't say no. So I said, yeah, how about uh, tomorrow, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning? And he says, sure, come over 10 o'clock. So I hang up the phone. I'm standing here in Tokyo. It's the shop. It's the afternoon. It's like 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, I got to be there in Tokyo tomorrow, in Ichizen tomorrow morning. So I go to the Twitch stream, put up a message. Sorry, guys, I really can't stream on Monday. This is a little special thing. I get some stuff, throw my backpack, head for Ueno Station. And the new train, the train that Eric Karen took, you know, yesterday, the train to get up to Echizen, it's three hours and it takes about 320 minutes. Boom. And I was in Echizen at 11.30 at night. I had made a hotel reservation from my computer while I was on the train. They held the reservation till late. I stumbled into this hotel 11.30 Sunday night in Echizen. In the morning, get my shower and bright and early, I'm on the way up there to meet this guy at 10 o'clock. So. <laughs> But what happened? Remember, we were in Echizen a week ago. Saduka and I went up there. It didn't disturb us stream, but we were up there talking to the Iwana family to put our paper order to the start of this whole episode. And I don't remember this. And I, I'm just going to repeat something I was told by that owner of that workshop. He said, "You were up here last week, weren't you?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah. We were, we were, you know, talking to Iwana-san. You know, the people, you know, two doors down from from your workshop." And he says, yeah, 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 I know, you met my mother. And I'm like, what do you mean, I met your mother? I went to the Iwanasan workshop. He said, no, 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 you were walking up the street here. And don't you remember, there was, there was you know, a little old lady, and, and you greeted her. And I have no memory of this, but when Saruk and I were walking, you know, there's people in the village, somebody's digging in their garden, someone's that, and in a small town like that, you don't just walk by, you, you nod your head to people as you walk by, or you might say, oh, hayo gozaimasu, or something like this, people you don't know. And we had done this, and I had, 10 seconds later, I'd forgotten it, just, we passed a little old lady, and I said, good morning. It turned out, that was the mother of the guy who owns this empty workshop, and he's now on board with me. The other thing I did was, when I got on the train that night, before I got there, I grabbed some, some Asakusa Omeyage, so when I met this guy at 10 o'clock in the morning, one, he's got this story about I met his mother. And second, I pulled out my backpack. I had brought some, you know, some cookies. This is what you do when you visit people. And he, he says, well, for me, and I'm like, I know, you know, I forget what the words I said, but, you know, of course, of course, I know, you know, please, please help yourself. You, you can't go and cold call somebody and meet somebody without taking some cookies. And he was stunned by this, that, uh, uh, you know, one of these barbarians, I mean, I don't want to uh, be too sarcastic here, he's a normal Japanese person, but he's living in the countryside, doesn't really get many chance to meet foreigners. So it turns out that Dave here, just in the normal course of business, I have like, I've stuck gold stars all over my, my homework here. <laughs> so <laughs> so he, He's on board, his face brightens up, and he starts talking, and away we go. He shows me around the place, and then he asks about what my plans are. And I, at this point, don't have any plans other than that, you know, you know the plans. But discussions are thus on the way. Discussions are on the way. It actually got, got deeper. You know, I chatted with him for half an hour or so, and then I left him and walked up, you know, two houses, two houses, three houses up the street to drop in and see our friends again. Iwano-san, the paper maker, you know. And then when I was coming back from there, a car came up the little, it's a little wide, there's no place for cars to pass, it's a little tiny street. Car came up past the guy leaned out the window and said, David, David, in, in Japanese, Debito, David san this guy. Of course, yes, yes, yes. And it turns out that the gentleman I had spoken to, the owner of this old workshop, the minute I left, he's on the phone. He's 
talking to the network, things are going on, you know, I'm up there walking around and within minutes of talking to this guy, stuff had started, to, signals go right round through the network and within five minutes a car pulls up beside me and says, David, come we talk. We're standing on the street, someone comes up behind, beep, 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 so he says, let's go back to that workshop where you were, I'll meet you there in a few minutes. So I go back to that workshop, I know, and the other guy is standing outside and now things start to happen. He has phoned a guy from City Hall who is involved in promoting paper making and who actually was involved in setting up the conference here. So the guy gets out of his car and he's, okay, what's going on? What do you want to do? Can I help you? Can we help you? Can you help us? What's going on? And we spent the last next half hour standing there chatting about different stuff that, that he thought we could do. I outlined the kind of concept I had in mind. So right there, not only are a couple of the craftsmen in the village there with me, the Iwano-san family who have been working there 30 years, they're with me. They're going to help me technically as much as they can. City Hall now, the first guy, I don't know if he's big or small in there, but City Hall is now enthusiastic. His car pulls up and says, Dave, can I talk to you? So it's exactly what I had been afraid might happen is this small town, 9,900 year history, guy parachutes from outside. I can know what to do here. Let's do this thing. You know, how far is that going to get? <clears throat> and it has gone exactly the opposite way from this. I'm in like Flint so far. They're interested in working with anything I can do. They're not negative. They're not hostile. They're eager to hear what I can help with, eager to help sort their things out so that I can maybe get involved. It is looking really, really, really good. Really, really good. What I have to maybe, it might even be going too far because I am not the white knight who can save their whole damn tradition. All I can do is just provide one more needs case for some paper, you know. Sorry, sorry, talking too much and not working enough. You can see where we're going with this thing, excuse me. Looking good. There's some hard spots here. I'm not too concerned about it. They mostly seem to be off the line. If they were on the line, it doesn't matter. We're okay. John has given me a very loose sketch here. Oh, I wish you'd maybe see it. This is John Amos's idea for next year's Patreon Chibis. They will be full color, of course. We have an underwater scene and we have uh, a little cute. John likes tanuki. It's his mark. John likes tanuki. Now, people are already talking about video. I mean, if we do, if this thing does start to happen, there will be video, video, video. Video, video, video. I mean, th my God, there will be video, video, video. Toki Toki Yuki has an interesting question, and he saw what he did. I cut the kento here already. What I could have done, I could have left it looking like this. I could have cut it here, and then pasted this thing down onto the wood without cutting the marks. That's the way it was done for hundreds of years. That's the way I was taught to do it. That's the way most other people do it. You paste the thing down first, and through the back of the paper you can see the kento mark, and chop, 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 you cut it there. It's okay for the first one when you do this because it really doesn't matter where those marks are. It could have been here, it could have been there. It doesn't make any difference. If I'd have stuck it here, it doesn't matter. The printer will print it there. That defines the corner, so it doesn't matter. <coughs> but where it does matter is where you're doing the transfer sheets. Imagine for a second then that we have finished carving our key block. We have marks on it. Then when you're transferring, the old day was put pigment over everything, put the paper on, see the marks, and cut them over there. This is far more accurate, because what we are really, really, really good at is putting a piece of paper, click, click, into registration marks. I've had 40 plus years of practice at this. All of our printers do this perfectly. So they can put it in here, click, put it on the color block, click. It's much more accurate than cutting through the back of the paper. Much, 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 much more accurate. Stories are getting mixed up. Stories are getting mixed up. 
Yes, on the University of Iowa. Is it Iowa or Idaho? I guess it's Iowa. Timothy Barrett, of course, he's retired now. I've talked to Tim. I've got his book. There's lots of information. As far as the raw information for this printmaking goes, I have a stack of books upstairs, without exaggerating, whatever, on the bookshelf. It's, I don't have a meter yet. It's about maybe two feet of books on the bookshelf upstairs. For more than 10 years now, I have been planning this. This is not something new that just happened today. Boom. I've been planning this for 10 years. I have more research material than this. You know, I just showed you a few minutes ago. The research paper I found last night, the effect of cooking on kozo paper. We have been collecting every part, piece of research we can possibly find. Data we have, people we don't have, an experience we don't have. Data we have run a market we have. All the bricks are here in line. All the bricks, uh, well, uh, bricks are in line. I'm, I'm mixing my metaphors. All the ducks are in line. We get a bunch of bricks on the table here now. All I gotta do is stack them up and make a building. All I have to do. Something else very funny. The, the workshop I showed you there, it's part way down the valley. He's two doors away from Iwano-san. The water pours down the valley. And the reason these papermaking workshops are all there is because since the old days, it's beautiful, pure, clean water there, just, just like any mountain valley, you know. I showed you a picture of the dam. There's a dam up at the end of the valley there. And after I had seen this guy, I walked up there took some pictures, it took a half an hour to get up there, stroll around, look at some pictures, want to go swimming, but the sign says no swimming, but whatever, we can maybe, I don't read Japanese, huh? <laughs> but I walked back down, and he's outside, he's still in the garden, so I'm going to walk past his workshop, he says, how are you doing, sir, you know, he says, what have you been doing, yeah, friendly-wise, well, gee, what are you, you're still here, what have you been doing, I said, I walked up the dam, and he says, the dam? I said, you know, the dam, the, the place where we're uh, in front of the tank, where all the water's compound, uh, impounded for the paper making. He says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he looked a bit puzzled, so I was puzzled as to why he was puzzled. I said, you know, and I get my camera out. I flip open the back of my camera, and I show him a couple of pictures. And you're not going to believe this. You're absolutely freaking not going to believe this. He'd never been up there. He's 74 years old. We're talking about 500 meters up the valley, the place where all the water for all the paper making is carefully curated and stored. And he's never been up there. And he's like, why, why did you go up there? And I'm like, why do you ask such a question? <laughs> I don't know. And this is really representative of this. There's something really deep here, you know. A man, end of his career, he's retired. He spent his whole career running a papermaking workshop in this village with 17 freaking hundred years of history there. And he didn't care. Didn't care. Didn't think it was anything to do with him. The water comes into his building and he didn't even think or care about it. And for Dave, before I even start this, like, I, I want to know how this works. Now, who's the bizarre one here? Who's the odd man out here? The village is on Imadate Machi. It's, it's Japan, Fukui Prefecture, Echizen City, Imadate Machi, Otakimura. <laughs> There's this line. If you, can I give you something to Google? Here, just a minute. Okay. Let me give you a second here. If you googled, you can google this in English, it doesn't matter, Google gets it. Echizen, uh, Echizen Shi. Let's go back, let's go back to the top. Fukui. Fukui ken Echizen Shi Ima Date Machi. And what you want is, uh, let's see, what would be the best place? Otaki. Otaki. If you Google that, that should get you in Google Maps, that should get you exactly, and you should, you can see the shape of the valley. Let me just confirm I didn't get this wrong. Yes, it's there, it's there, it's there. If you Google that, pull it up on Maps. Oh, 
Where am I? Oh, I've zoomed in too far. Just a sec. One sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Yep, yep, there we are. Okay, if I, uh, if I put a pin here, let me put a pin on Iwano-san's place. Bingo. Put a pin on Iwano-san's house. Oh, that's not quite it. Put a pin, it's right there. Eight, nine, boom. How do I do this? Do I share? Just a minute, how do I do this? Share, send the link, copy link, copy to clipboard. Okay, come back to the broadcast software. This is a pin on Iwano-san's house. And you, if you can walk up and down the... Oh, it's not the same thing. It didn't copy the clipboard. You can find it. You can find it. It won't copy from Google Maps. Why, 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 why? Copied the clipboard. Click. Do it again. Come back. OBS. Sorry about this. Here we are. Maps. So Flyfish is something interesting. I said, who's the odd man out here? <clears throat> Flyfish is saying he didn't have to worry about his water supply. So I get it. He didn't have to worry. Dave is, is curious why the man wasn't curious, because I think it's necessary for someone to learn all about your craft. I can't make good woodblock prints without knowing about all these little details in the back. But the idea that this man had focus he just simply got to work every day, made paper, made paper, made paper, without worrying about it. I get that as well. So I'm not, you know, upset about this. I'm just, I was a little bit gobsmacked, because um, he's not like me. That's fine. He's not like me. The other thing too, please remember, you know, this is all just first trial like, like speculation and, and, and fact finding. There's no contracts here, there's no agreements here. You're not going to see me standing in front of that particular workshop. I went to another one as well, I just took a, took a picture of that one. There are a number of people we're talking to, a number of different possibilities could go forward. So don't, don't misunderstand my story here today. The venture the last couple of weeks has been fact finding. Nothing is happening yet. Also, if you look around that town, you will see many, many things. They call them paper mills. There are many, many, many workshops still active in that town. They are making modern pulp paper. It's still a paper-making village. And in fact, there's a story about the water, which is a little bit terrifying. Just a sec. Let me get this done first. Who recognizes this? It's upside down. Who recognizes this? You have to be a pretty heavy fan of our work before you recognize this. The paper mills that are mentioned there are, are um, manufacturers, uh, no, factories that make modern stuff, pulp, paper, or fiberboard, or all kinds of stuff. Over the centuries there, over the decades, it, as the need for handmade paper declined, different workshops just changed their business model. So most of the places you see on that map, anything that says a paper mill or a paper factory, whatever, is nothing to do with our kind of paper. Yes, it's part of the Kyoto Journey first print. It's just the back side of the piece of paper. I just used a, I told you before, a few minutes ago, I used the back side of our paper, and I, I just, I used the back side of that one. So this is not, uh, we're not recutting Kyoto Journey prints here. Oh, it's five millimeter gumpy. We're going to have a peel.
I'm, I'm getting rougher and rougher with these peels, you know, just, I don't care anymore. Just get it going, wrap it off. Here we go, 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 here we go. Are we ready? Boom, boom. Bang, bang, bang. You guys do your scoring. I don't care anymore. Bang, 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 bang. Tough stuff. Oh, there's a story about Gumpy. So many freaking stories. So many stories. I've just insulted that man, the guy who I talked to, who was standing in front of his workshop and who didn't know where the paper came from. So I left it at that, and we think, geez, not such an interesting guy. He then showed me something in our chats, whatever, after we'd been talking about the business side of stuff, whatever. He says, I got something funny to show you. And there was a, a, a pot. Actually, it's visible in that picture I posted on Instagram. There's a little flower pot standing in front of his workshop there. And there's a tiny little, about one meter high, a tiny little thin plant of some kind. It's not a green plant, it's a stick. It looks just like a, a stick stuck in this pot. It's about a meter high. I'll be showing pictures later as we learn more about this. He says, do you know what that is? I'm like, like Dave knows absolutely nothing about gardening or pots or flowers or anything. But in retrospect, I should have known what it was. He says, it's Gumpy. And like my first reaction is, uh, that's actually, I want, what I wanted to say, I didn't. What I wanted to say was that's not possible. We all know, all of us in the, involved in the papermaking field know <clears throat> that you can't plant Gumpy. There's three types of Japanese fibers, plants, that are used for Japanese paper making. The kozo, we call paper mulberry. It's, there's, you plant it in fields. There's, there's farms that have kozo plantations. You plant it in fields. There's the plant called mitsumata. We don't use it so much in our kind of printmaking, but it's a common plant used in making Japanese paper. It's another bushy type shrub. They plant it all over the place. It's in the mountains as well, and they plant it all over the place. Gumpi quote, unquote, cannot be domesticated. And if you look it up, look it up, look it up, people have tried, research agencies have tried for hundreds of years, that's not an exaggeration, people have tried to domesticate gumpy. Can't be done, was the word. And every year, every summer, it's harvested in May and June, people go out into the woods, they know where it's gonna be, they slice it off, they've got the license to harvest the gumpy on that particular set of mountains or whatever. Gumpy. And, but he's got, so he says in a pot, he says, we're growing it. And I'm like, again, I didn't get lost. I said, wait a minute, look, we're all told that this can't be done. People have been trying hundreds of years to do this. You can't just grow gumpy. And he's, he, 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 he's come in the backyard. We go around the back of the house and they have a field of gumpy. A couple of rows, it's all growing there. And he's now, he's the... Because I've got some credibility in there. We've, we've been talking for a few hours. I've got credibility in this field. So he's not just bragging to, to no dude. He's, he's showing off to somebody who knows what's going on. So I said, okay, wait a minute. Look what's going on. And I'll, you know, I'm not an agricultural botanist or whatever, but as far as I was told all my life that we can't grow a gumpy. And he said, yeah, that's what everybody's been thinking. And then he mentioned the guy's name, which I didn't remember. We'll, we'll be talking about this very, very much later on. He said, we've been working together with a research guy at uh, some university in the neighborhood. And he said, they've got it. They've got it. And it wasn't anything this guy had himself done, but they've got it. And he said, that's it. We now know how to do this. And it's a question of, uh, of preparation. It's pots in seedlings and at a certain temperature and alkali till they get to a certain stage. Then you put them in your garden and then they're good to go. So it turned out that the problem was the very youngest stage of these plants. So they have now figured out a way. And the problem, of course, and he, when, I, when I looked at these plants and we crouched down and looked at them and they look really healthy and everything, but I said, like, I forget the exact words. We're talking Japanese anyway. I said, like, now you tell me. Like, what's going on? You've just closed your workshop, which was a specialized workshop making gumpy paper, and now you've cultivated it. And he's like, too little, too late. <laughs> Well, it's little, but I don't think it's too late, so... Uh, I'm sorry, the conversation just flies all over the place. This is the way my life has been now, the last few weeks. It's just all over the place. 
both things are happening at the same time and they're both true. That industry is in total free fall collapse. Laid off, workers closing, factories closing. They're in free fall and they don't care anymore. Just finish. That's true. And at the other side of it, at the same time this is happening, there's more demand for this product than ever before. That's not true. There was demand for from all across the country. But there is increasing demand for their product now. There's increasing number of people who don't want to be salaryman. They want some interesting job. There's an increasing demand of young people who don't want to live in the city. They'd like to find a nice life in the country, but they can't because there's no jobs. Both of these things are true at the same time, but neither of these sort of groups of people are talking to each other or even know that the other side exists. But I'm busy. Where do we start? Let's start with a fish. I wish I was 24 again, Anthony. No, I wouldn't be 24. Maybe I wish I was uh, 44, maybe. I would say 44. 42. I'm 72 now. That's it. Yeah, let's put the number. I'm 72 now. But if only, if only, if only I could be 42 again. Someone says, why? Energy, I'm tired, you know? Nine hours of sleep. I get lots of sleep. I'm a good sleeper. I e easily eight hours. I'm dead to the world. I go down. I'm dead to the world for easily eight hours. <clears throat> I'm, doing, I'm doing it right. I eat well. I sleep well. I exercise. I got back from the pool this morning. I did my kilometer at the pool. The paste lady. I meant to mention this to you. It's April. The paste lady is not there. I'm devastated. I'm swimming alone this morning. I, it took me 27 minutes. It normally takes me 24 to 25 on a good day, 25 to 26 on a slow day. It took me 27 minutes this morning. She's gone. I hope she's just, it's just, maybe she's taking care of grandchildren or something, or children, and she'll be back next week. I hope she's gone. Lady I never met, don't know her name, don't know anything about her, but uh, she's gone from my life. <clears throat> and I can't swim. I can't find a pace to swim. <laughs> Hire someone, yeah, right. <laughs> now, John has uh, used a brush here, and he's not really proficient in a brush. He's made some interesting shapes. How much do we try to pretend this is hoxai and, and change them? How much do we leave them? For the most part, you know, I'm going to leave this. There's no attempt to, to make this look like something it isn't. John has given us a nice fun picture with a few animals here. And for the most part, I'm just going to carve what I see. A couple of things are like he broke it up here. I won't do that. We'll carve it through. But for the most part, we're going to take John's lines and just carve what we see.
this wood is a little bit softer than I would like, you know. Again, for the Petron Chibis, we're okay. We'll be making a few hundred of these, and then that's it. The blocks will be retired. So, uh, so this isn't the kind of print we'll be making for the next, uh, the next hundred years or so. So we're okay with this stuff. There's more about the water, you know, the dam there and the water. The story actually gets a little bit more scary. The first times I was in that village many, many years ago, the first time I was there, it would have been, oh my God, 35 years ago. I don't remember. I've been going there every year for about 35 years. And one time, it, it, it would have been, I don't even remember, 15 years ago. Let's just grab a number. Between 10 and 20 years ago. One time when I was on the, my annual trip up there, there was construction going on. The little uh, river, quote, stream that runs down that valley in, in the map I linked to you a few minutes ago. It was under construction. You know, they were, they were, machines were digging and concrete were pouring. They were cleaning the channel. The channel was a little bit old. They were bricks. The channel must have been built many, many hundreds of years ago. And it was time to clean it up you know, get the thing done with modern concrete. And I didn't think much about it. Okay, no problem. They're cleaning it up. Maybe I even said to one son, they're fixing the channel. And he says, oh, we don't get our water from there. Our water comes from the mountain behind us, so it's not affecting us at all. I'm like, yeah, cool. Good, good, good. I knew the system, that there was a tank up at the top of the valley. The water came down through channels. The various papermaking workshops took their share. And it must be very carefully allocated. You're not just grabbing water. You, everybody has a percent share of the water. This is families that have been doing this for a very, very, very long time. So that's the history, the background there. I knew it had been reconstructed. And it all looks beautiful, clean concrete now. No problem at all. But when I was talking to the, in, when I was in that abandoned workshop, I shouldn't say abandoned, when I was in that closed workshop that's closed, not being used, one thing I did bring up to the guy straight away, I said, you know, it's all very well to have a conversation about maybe bringing this workshop back to life, but an outside person coming in clearly doesn't have any water rights. Do the water rights for a workshop, do they live with the workshop or do they live with the person? And if that person is retired and gone and a new face comes in and wants to use the workshop but doesn't have water rights, this is a non-starter right from the beginning. He waved me off. He said, no, no it doesn't matter anymore. And I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't matter anymore? And he said, well, you know, we're just using tap water here. And I'm like, I was gobsmacked when he talked to me about the Gampi, but this one, I was stunning. I said, well, what do you mean? I, I, thought it, I thought it was misunderstanding his Japanese, you know. He said, no, we're using tap water. Now, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Every time you talk to a paper craftsman anywhere within 100 miles of that town, they say the same thing. You know why our paper is so good? It's because the water, the water, you know, we've got it from the mountains and the water. And of course, any craftsman. Anybody, they're making osake, they're making miso, they're making whatever. They always talk about the same thing. It's, it's the terroir, terroir, you know, the French, the, the vines, it's the soil. You know, of course, it's right here, right here, right here. They all tell you the same thing. Then this guy who's had this magnificent, beautiful workshop for X hundred years, he says, what are you using tap water? <laughs> Wait a minute. And the backstory is a bit of a horror story. That reconstruction 15 or so years ago when the, the, the prefecture came in and took that thing and rebuilt it all, as part of rebuilding it, they destroyed all the old piping that had been taking water from the dam at the top out to all the individual workshops. Now, obviously, this, this must have, everybody must have known what was going on. And the point was, because the workshops were dying, because nobody was doing this, because nobody cared about it, the prefecture and the construction ministry considered it to be more important to make the river clean, typhoon safe, get rid of the old bricks. The fact that it destroyed the water source for all the paper making workshops was an irrelevancy. And I am not making this up. One of Japan's prime, number one, paper making villages 
the construction destroyed the water source for all the workshops. And I, if, if he'd been telling me this story, I would have just said, look, stop smoking whatever you're smoking because it's hurting you. <laughs> and no. Now, Iwano-san, and I just told you, Iwano-san, he's on the other side of the river from this guy. And it turns out that he wasn't getting water from this anyway. Iwano-san's water comes off the mountain right behind him. There's a little spring up there. They've got a little tiny pipe that runs down into the back of their workshop. And 24 hours a day, nonstop, all day, every day, every month, every year, this little pipe runs water through Iwano-san's workshop. They have a little tank where they catch it so they can dig buckets in and it goes through. It's a natural spring for him. And it's not just he wanted to send it's two or three families on that side of the valley. The guys on the other side, when you look at the map, the guys on the east side, it was all destroyed. And then I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There are paper mills all over the place here. I mean, next door to this guy, there's a giant place. And you, they, the trucks come out of it with rolls. They're not doing rolls of newsprint, but it comes out with paper and rolls. What about these guys? He said, oh, 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 well, that was part of the deal. The construction ripped out all the small pipes, but they put in beside it, they put in this large plastic pipe. You must have seen it if you walked up there. And I did. When popping out from beside the dam is this patch. All the old channels were there. And it's a patch. There's a white plastic tube that comes out the side and you can see it's snaking, it's buried a bit, it pops across a bridge, it's buried a bit. And that's the water supply for the big factories. And these guys can't touch it. It's totally, absolutely upside down. And I, I just like couldn't believe it. Kitaro's paper is next to Iwano-san. He gets the same water. Kitaro's paper is the same water as Iwano-san. And then, okay, I didn't have time to talk about it. Somebody's asking, where does the tap water come from? Now, in a village like that, obviously the tap water, so there must be, for the, for the water supply for the village, it's not that particular dam here. There must be in a valley somewhere nearby, they must have impounded the valley, put a dam, made water, and the water for the village comes from there. So please don't panic on this. When we say tap water here, it's obviously very, very locally sourced. It might be a mix of springs, of wells, and of some nearby river. So this is not a disaster. The water is clean and clear, but just the story that the construction ministry had come through and destroyed the water supply for one of Japan's most famous papermaking villages. It's just, this is a story that you could not make this up. All right, I'm sorry, it's nine o'clock. I think we're gonna see, uh, uh, I was gonna say Iwano-san. We're gonna see Iwano-san in a few minutes, I think. So already Dave walks away from there. He's walking back towards the station. It's about an hour and a half's walk back to the station after I've had all my meetings, you know. And I'm thinking about all these things and oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, you know. And I can, I'm already starting the, in my mind. You've probably already started talking about it. Okay, Dave gets up there. We get a cooperation with one of these workshops. We find a young craftsman. We start involved in getting paper making. And then... We get over to the construction ministry. We want to rebuild the old water supply for the papermaking workshops because look at this, papermaking has come back to life. And that would be a that would be a story. But that's getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, I think. The runoff is all controlled. There's water intake and water output. They're all in separate channels. The runoff is completely separately controlled. Absolutely. Who's this? Oh, it's Ayano-san. Good morning, good morning. Pardon me? Is it raining now or thinking about raining? Raining, It's actually raining, is it? Oh, that's street. Is my camera okay? I wonder, okay. this spring. It's a funny year, isn't it? It's a funny year. Step forward just a little bit, man. So, so, so. For those of you who don't know, there's nobody there who doesn't know, this is Ayano-san. One of 
lady who helps run this business. <laughs> I don't know if I should introduce this. I, I never know. I mean, we've, we've got Sharon here. There's people who have seen you a million times. And there's yeah. lots. There's always like, here, first time chat, first time chat, first time chat. There's a whole That's bunch of people stuff. who are here oh, for okay, the first time. Okay. So, so, so. I thought most of them are like, you know, normally here. So, like, I... I really don't know. There's feel, always you know, a bunch of new faces here. So, yeah. No, me too. Myself again and again. Me too. We have the same thing. I know, how much do I need to explain, you know, when we're, we're the same thing has been told every day for seven years, you know. So, so I don't know. So. Anyway, this is Ayama san, one of Hi. the people who really runs this place. You know, I just make noise. These guys do the work. So. Yeah. yeah, it's the other way around this year. No, 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 no. I, I provide the vision, of course. I sort of set up what the job should be. But what did I do yesterday? I just hung around and chatted with people. I just made a bunch of noise. No. I'm, not, I'm, not belittling, I'm not belittling myself because I'm important here. But I make, as I said, I talk and talk and make noise. And you guys actually do, do the work, you know. But you built this, you know. Yeah, yeah different company sort of and, you know, How are you system. doing? How are you doing this morning? I'm doing. I don't know how I'm doing. No cuffing glasses this no morning. No cuffing glasses because of the rain. I think it's, it's the pollen. She sometimes wears the glasses that help right. protect from pollen, but not this morning. Yeah. You're okay. So just wearing the mask, just in case. But that's funny because when I came here this morning after going back from the pool, I was sneezing my head off, and for the first half of this stream, I was sneezing and blowing my nose and rubbing my eyes. I saw this stuff. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. you get that from uh, from the pool. I don't know, like some kind of germs or. Well, I mean, it was, it was just today. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No. The pool. Sometimes there's a di uh, time difference, though, when I get the reaction, mm. Mm. and uh, actually when mm. I'm outside. So, mm. like, I go outside maybe like mm. all day, and I wasn't like really. Yeah. You know, wearing the mask or you know glasses, and after a few hours, I started getting this like reaction. There is there there is something the pollen thing we have. Clearly, there's more to it than just the pollen. And a little tiny episode. When I was first here in Japan, pollen had really hit me really quite hard. I hadn't had the problem in Canada, but I had the problem here. And every spring, I dreaded the day when it would start. Yeah. And I remember one year, what happened was I didn't have it, didn't have it, didn't have it. People around me are starting. It's clearly in the air. The cars are starting to show the yellow. And I didn't have it. Yeah. I was thinking, wow, I'm okay. But then what I did was, I, I remember moving some boxes on my desk, they were dusty, and I cleaned up a bit of dust on my desk, sneezed, and that was it. For the next yeah. three months, I have thickly, triggered. clearly, I triggered something. <laughs> so there's something like that, you know. You didn't get triggered today. I did get triggered yeah. today. So once you sneeze, it's something. Or you see somebody sneeze, you know. Yeah. I don't know how much of this is mental and how much is something that happens in your I nose. Have no idea. No. No. I've been having this since like when I was mm. a kid, like mm. a little mm. kid. So, mm. Mm. so the thing exactly. is, don't talk about it. You know, but I think yeah, she said that. Well, she said that. I think one a day last week, two or three weeks ago, and I said, "How's your pollen?" And she says, "I don't yeah. talk. I don't want to talk about it." Okay. <laughs> so. and it's a shame that you know Sakura season to me overlaps with this theater uh, uh, and Cyprus. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, so you don't want to go outside. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Vietnam is like whatever. Like I want. Mm. I want to be mm. safe inside. Mm. So. Mm. Mm. so. Oh, yeah. oh. I was, I was on a, yesterday, Yamada-san, he's got some paperwork for me. We have a new employee that started April 1st. I don't, she didn't just come here. Uh, Kitazawa-san has been here for a few months, you know, complaining, whatever. She'll be the person stepping in for Ayano-san when Ayano-san starts her maternity leave in, a, in a, a few months, whatever. So anyway, Kitazawa-san, her formal employment started April 1st. So we have paperwork to do. And one of the jobs is a bunch of papers for her stuff has to be taken to the whatever local employment yeah. offices, whatever, to set up her pension, whatever. So yesterday, Yamada-san, one of our young workers, the accountant guy, he said he'll be taking it over there today. And I said, maybe, whatever, I'm maybe not so busy tomorrow, can I take it over there for you? you know? And he said, no, I'll do it. And I said, no, it's okay, Yamada-san, relax, I'll, I'll, I'll take it over there. And he's like, did you, did you see the conversation? He says, no, I'll do it. And like, what's going on? The employment office is just at the south end corner of Ueno Park, which is all, of course, full of cherries right now. I want an excuse uh, to go over there and look at the cherries. So, and he wants to go and <laughs> see it as well. So I had the idea, what we should do, let's just close up today and all walk over there and see the cherries yeah, or something. Up, <laughs> but I know what I <laughs> Whatever, so yeah. it can't be done. So. This week, more cloudy, rainy, mm, like almost, mm, so, you know. Mm. I don't know, the week. forecast for the weekend might be a bit better. You know, we'll see. So, mm. we'll see. <laughs> I'm not going to Hanami anyway, so it yeah, doesn't yeah, really yeah. matter. Yeah. Yeah, we get started too. This is they're supposed to ship in April, right? I don't know. Um, 
May this. Well, we, we've, we've, May. we've now adjusted it yeah. to May, so yes. So, so I've got to get going on this. So, okay. so. The shares are done. I mean, the share, the share carving is done. Okay. And for the share certificates, okay. I'll probably be printing that. Maybe on stream. I, I'll reach out to these guys. I'll print it on stream. Okay, one, and one the day. and the stamps, everything is ready except oh, good. for the, the prints. Okay, so. okay, no problem. And I, we don't have quite enough paper, but I ordered from Awagami yesterday. Ah, the okay. paper. I so those all, all the ducks are lined up for that okay, job. So. Okay, okay. Looking right, good, well, ma'am. Looking all right. good. Yeah, looking good. Right. Thank you. Okay, this. Yeah. Okay, I better do a bit more talking work. Great, thanks, Alison. Okay, Thank I'll be up in a few minutes. Yeah. Thank you. My God, all talk and no work. If, if we keep this up with this stream, it'll be just an awful. You know, I don't know the balance, you know, that there's just so many things going on here to explain and talk about. I'm sorry, you know. It seems that people are interested in these things. They want to hear what we're doing and what we're up to, but so I guess it's okay. You know. Show and tell. We do have a show and tell. I've got one, two, three packages here behind me, ready to go. So today's show and tell will be a normal, normal, quiet stuff. You know, your your socks are safe. We don't have a dramatic, spectacular show and tell today. Just just some quiet, nice stuff. We'll also have another guest, I think it's, uh, is it Saturday? No, not this week, I think it's next week. I know the Sensei Marjin, who, who is ready to start his uh, next excursion, his trip the length of Japan. He'll be dropping in to update us on what he's doing just before he starts. So I don't, I don't think he's going to be here for the whole stream, but it's uh, not next Saturday, the Saturday after. He'll be dropping in to, to give us an update on the status of his project, and then I think he'll leave here and, and head for Kyushu ready to start his walk so uh, so he'll be dropping by to, to give us an update So when will our paper supply dry up? This is an interesting question. I can't give you an exact answer on this because when I put our paper order in, remember the answer I got back from him was that he will not be able to make our entire order. So we wanted, I don't even remember the total, we wanted X thousand sheets. He said we can't make that many. And it then varied. I said, well, okay, you know, I'd expected this. So I said, how much, you know? And the first thing he threw out was he threw out the idea that we could probably make about two-thirds of it. But this is very, very iffy, 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 iffy. He said, maybe we can make about two-thirds of it. But then later on in the conversation, this was a couple of weeks ago, he said, you know, after I had put the thing on paper and pushed the napkin across the table and, and there were the numbers, he did the, the sucking in thing. He said, maybe we can get half of that done within the year. So it's very, I don't know how much he's going to be able to make. It could be less, it could be more, we don't know. As it stands right now, if he got hit by a bus tomorrow, our current paper maker, if he was taken out tomorrow and we never received another sheet of paper from him 
at our current level of manufacture, we've got two years, give or take, a little bit of leeway. Again, we make so many different prints of so many different sizes, I can't tell you our, our production level per day, whatever. But we've got upstairs in the closet there two years of paper, if it all died right now. And we keep it in reserve for two reasons. There's two main reasons we do this. One is, of course, we don't want to run the just-in-time Toyota series system here. Because we've only had one supplier for our paper, it would have been insanely suicidal for me just to keep one week's supply on and have the paper come in and use it and come in and use it. That would have been stupid. And for years, I have been building a paper bank upstairs. The other reason is that I haven't A-B tested this, but everybody with experience in the business, we're talking about the printmaking business here now, not the paper making business, says that it's better when you receive your paper, let it sit for, and they usually say, give it a year or so before using it. What actually happens during that year, I haven't any idea. This is just a thing, an idea that's in the air what physical changes could be happening in the mat, the net of fibers, or the, you know, this is before we size it, so there's no glue in there at this point. I'm just passing this on as anecdotal data. They, experienced people, generally say, let it sit for at least a year or so. So with those two things in mind, that's how we've been doing it. If we receive a package of paper today, it gets labeled, dated, a lot number gets created, bang, it goes up there, and it goes to the end of the line. It's first in, first out. The stuff I'm going to take out next is stuff that has been put in there about two years ago. Now, we're not talking about finished prints here, because that's another story. When you've made a print, it also now changes. Whatever, it's a big, big, big topic, that one. We're talking about paper before it is sized and before it is used. So if you're getting a print, the, the paper I will be using to make these Patreon chibis next month, it's paper we would have received in 2022. The 2021 paper, I think, is now almost all gone up there. There might be one packet of 20. We get it, remember, we get it in different sizes and different thicknesses. There might be a bit of 2021 paper left up there, but it's for the most part now 2022 paper that we're using for our paper making. And it's just in a closet. It's, it's, we don't stack it vertically. Or we don't stack it this way. It's all stacked this way in its original lots. We don't open it. We're not talking about thousands of sheets of white paper visible there. These are packages of paper in the original wrapping. We just stand them there. We stand them up on end. They're carefully supported. If somebody reminds me, I could take a picture, you know, there's nothing secret about it. I could, I could take a picture, put it on in Instagram if, if I think about it. So if somebody sends me an email during the middle of the day here, I can uh, take a quick snapshot and, uh, and show you. How much paper do other workshops have? What's the general thing? I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> We've talked about paper, 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 but remember, for us, paper is just, just one part of what goes on here, you know? There's designing, there's bookkeeping, there's you name it. There's a million things for us to do here. Paper is sort of my most slow-moving issue. As, as the owner of this company and, and the director of operations here, you know, I have different things to deal with. And some of the things happen quickly, and some of them happen slowly. And for us, paper, that's a very, very slow-moving issue. So the seeds I planted last Monday will literally, literally take years. To, to even show. How's our time? Oh, it's show and tell time already. My God, my God, my God. Show and tell time.
So I'm saying if we do set up a paper making workshop, would the sizing be done there? No. Sizing is not done per batch of paper that we make. You can make paper 500 sheets at a time. That paper would be used at different seasons for different jobs for different requirements. We don't size a lot of paper. A lot as in batch lot. We size paper per printing job. So the sizing will be done downstream near the actual part where the printing is done. Okay, we have a Chantel here today. Interesting little Chantel. There's a bunch of prints in here. Uh, I think there's two similar items in here, one of which I'm going to keep myself and one of which will be going into our shop. No green tape story. Level one. Does the sizing recipe depend on the climate weather in which the print will be made on that paper? The sizing recipe depends on the weather climate at the moment that you're putting the sizing on. Firstly, if it's happening in winter or if it's happening in summer. It's mostly what the temperature is right now and the humidity right now when you're putting the sizing on the paper. It's not so much when the print production will start. But for us, because it's all happening stacked up, we do the sizing, the paper then goes through the next day for printmaking, it's all one of a kind. Okay, this is new stuff. This is not old, antique. There's two dates on these, which is which. Okay. Definitely not an old antique object. And yes, that Watanabe. And yes, yes, that Shouzaburo. Although Shouzaburo san died many, many, many years ago. We have two of these here today. I have 2020 and 2021. And of course, we're using uh, zodiac symbols here. We have, this must be a collection of the zodiac animals, the, the, all the different 12 animals. And leaping to the front is the, what was 2020? You told me, is that a cat? So it must be year of the tiger, was it? I don't know. And then 2021 must have been year of the ox we have here. These are calendars from the Watanabe workshop down in the Ginza. I think I may have, you know, in talking about them, they come up in passing when we're talking about things now and then. And I, I frequently diss them, you know. What nobbies, I'm frustrated. They are, they are a glorious part of the Hanga history. Shozaburo, what nabe, whatever. I can't say single-handedly, but he, yeah, he changed the course of printmaking history back in the early two, uh, 20th century. The company is still in existence. They're still making woodblock prints. They are no longer a force in the industry, but they are still making woodblock prints. And each year they put out a calendar. They sell this in their shop and it may be by subscriptions. Maybe people sign up for it in advance. And they make a bunch of prints with a bunch of contemporary designers. Now this is not, we're not talking on you know, a Sotheby's level fine art here. We're talking about casual people who make woodblock prints. And what happens is I believe that each designer designs the prints gets it, you know, what now we choose it. Like, like our eight views of cats, a bunch of different people send in designs. One of them chooses from them. <clears throat> the people themselves cut the blocks. And then the blocks come over to the Watanabe studio and their printers go bang, 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 and print them out. The bottom part of it is, of course, this is machine printed paper. That's not woodbuck print. And the woodbuck prints themselves are woodbuck prints. It's on very, very soft. It's pulp paper. This is not the high quality Ichi Zen Hosho prints, but they are a very, very nice little deal. I don't know how much they sell for. They're probably still in the Watanabe catalog. 
Maybe somebody could look it up. I should have looked it up. But I picked up these the other day on Yahoo Auctions. And it's a really, really nice example of how woodblock printmaking can be used in daily life, the way we like to do it here. Casual, simple, clean, non-pretentious prints whatsoever, very nicely made. And um, come on, get this on your desk all through the year. A calendar of handmade woodblock prints. This is so cool. It's Sundays and holidays, of course, somebody's asking in red. It starts on Sunday. Nichigetsuka sui moku kindo. It's a Sunday to Saturday calendar. Ah, domo. Arigato zaimasu. Domo. Thank you. Hai, hai, domo. It's our neighbor bringing the, the news, you know, there's, there's a clipboard with local news. Cleaning day will be next Tuesday at 9.30, whatever. He's the next shop. He's the tendon shop in the corner, dropping it to me. We will read it, pass it on to the oyster shack next door. It's the local news update. I have no idea what this is. We're inside a large building. Is this guy riffing on, on Escher? I don't know. I have no idea. Names and dates. There might be. Is there a sheet? There's nothing inside telling us the who, why, what, where, when. Sorry about that. There's a sort of not a great many colors here. This one is, what is it? One, two, three, four colors on this one. Obviously, to try and keep the cost of the calendar down, they can't put too many colors in each one. This is very, very, very enjoyable stuff. For all I know, they, they're still available. If you checked on Watanabe's uh, website, maybe these are there. I don't know the price. It's rough work, but it's very, very attractive. Ah, uh, domo. Ah, soka. Naga no kara. Oh, yo katta. Hai, good. Zoo to match it on this. Hai, domo. The crows and moon. Ayano san, the crows and moon are here if you're watching. That was the black cat delivery man. Not sure. Is that an eclipse? I'm not sure. I don't know. Who's working in Nagano? Vivid asking. It's Chiharu, Kawaii Chiharu, the young lady. Young lady, she's uh, whatever, a lady. Uh, she's working at home. She was living in Tokyo with her family, uh, divorced, took back her maiden name, moved back up to the town she came from. And she works in a little small town in Nagano. She's uh, next to Kubota, she's our top gun. Kubota san and Chiharu san are our double. Top Gun printers. She trained under Kubota-san at Adachi many years ago. This is nice. Look at this. Cool. It's a little bit cliched, but yeah, very nice. These are very nicely done, you know. I said, I was, the, I was the guy who was always sort of dissing Watanabe. I'm, the reason I'm not so happy with Watanabe is their current versions of Shin Hunger prints are carelessly made. They really don't make them very well. And you can quote me. But if they're doing things like this to help keep Woodbot from making life, that's fine. I'm on board with this. No holidays in December, really? Is it a full set or is there one missing? Did we get 12? Excuse me. One, two, three, four. Oh, I see. We didn't get 12. Four and five are together. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Oh, seven, eight are together. 10, 11. So we don't have 12 prints. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine prints. And some of them are doubled. I see. Cute. My guess in the old days, the set would have actually been 12, but economics being what it is, it's now down to nine. I didn't catch that. Look at that. Some sheets had double months. Let's look at the next one. I got these two years of these.
Did anybody find the Watanabe website? Is it there? Somebody's got it. Lost Words has got it. So are they selling these still? Lost for Words has got that. Oh, this one has data. This one has a data sheet. Here we go. Yeah, I'll just put up so you can read it. Yeah, I was right. So it's the designers who are cutting the blocks and passing them in. And then the Watanabe print crew does the actual printing. We have a, we have a, a website where well, somebody's already linked it. Hanga SW. SW means Shozaburo Watanabe.com. There's no price listed here. There you go. It's not Monday starting the week. Sunday. It's Sunday. What are you talking about? This is a normal calendar structure. What are you talking about? This is the way calendars should be done, right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Is somebody saying you want to start with Monday? That's chaos. I don't know. Whatever's common where you don't. No idea. Kinsan, good morning. Good morning. Kinsan. Yes. You're from America. In America, when you see a calendar like this, what's the first day? What It goes from what day to what day? Sunday. Yeah, I think so, right? Same as Japan. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yes. I'm getting on the stream here. A bunch of people are saying, should start with Monday. They're saying, Monday here, America, Monday, 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 Monday. Oh. To me, it starts Sunday. I don't know. Yeah. I think, do we have a country-specific difference here? You mean, when does the... On the calendar, it's supposed to be formatted that way. To me, this is natural. But it's where I come from in Canada, it was done this way. And here in Japan, it's done this way. So I was thinking this was sort of global. Oh. No, people are saying no. There's a bunch of people here saying it should start this way Monday with Saturday, Sunday at the end as a weekend. And I get that sort of makes sense. But mm. yeah, look at this. Germany, it's Monday. Boy, oh boy. Oh. No idea. Okay, I... I I don't have a dog in this fight. We're all reporting here. So, good morning, good guys. Sam, hello. Let's look at some prints. Forget the dates. Let's look at some prints. This is Nihonbashi in Japan. The Nihonbashi, the famous bridge under the freeway, and there are now plans to get rid of the freeway. Whether it will happen in my lifetime or not, I don't know. But there it is. Cats, what are they doing? Does Watanabe have something to do about cats? <laughs> like I'm going to complain about that. <laughs> They're easy to print. Oh, wait. Where have we seen this before? <laughs> I'll bet you that's the same designer. I wonder if they reuse the same 12 people each year or same nine people each year. I don't know. Or is it a contest they run every year? I have no idea. I'm sorry. I don't know the background. This is the same person. It may be the same people that run for a while, you know. I'm not in love with this one at all. This is not the kind of thing that floats my boat. I don't even know what we're looking at. Is this the re-entry of a Falcon 9 booster? I don't know. Deja vu all over again. We have. They're, they're all the same people. Interesting. Okay. You can match them all up. They are, I think, I think sort of in reverse maybe, in a different order, it's the same people that we saw before. This is nicely done. Look at this, clean. It's a bit cliched. 
It's cliche, but nicely made. I'm much more interested in a print that's nicely made, you know. But very, look at this, it's damaged on the back, the baron, look at this. The paper is so soft and so easy to print, it's damaged on the back from the rubbing from the baron. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Whoa, it's running. Okay, there we go. A nice little calendar. I, I wish I knew how much it costs. I paid a few thousand yen for these on Yahoo Auction. I don't know what now is priced. I should look it up and let you know. Okay, thank you very much. This is Thursday. I'll be back Saturday. Normal, you know what I'm going to be doing now for the next little while. It's going to be carving, 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 carving. Uh, one day next week, perhaps Monday, perhaps Thursday, I will try and organize a printing stream upstairs if I can. And then the Saturday after that, we'll probably get a visit from Jason before he starts his work. Other than that, there we are. Thank you very much. Let me put the camera outside up. That's, of course, the hot, cold towel. No, the cold, hot towel delivery man in the rain. Okay, see you in a couple of days. Thanks again for watching, people. Let's put this down. Three, two, one. See you in a couple of days. Bye for now.